So let's make this one. Thank you. 
oh, we need to make H2O2 nucleophilic for that to occur. We need to give it a negative charge, so yeah. it sort of reacts with the base. Does it also just react with OH and NOH? Yep, so that's the only time you use NOH in this reaction. And NOH is part of the base product. Yep. I asked for a red eye, so it gave me a two shot for a mistake. So he gave me two. So this is the first time I've had two shots in espresso in my coffee. So I don't know if my heart's going to explode or something before we're done. And if it does, everything you need to know is on this page. <laughs> so I'm going to turn the page. I'll do it twice. Um, and now I'm going to redraw the reactants we have. Boron bonded to two hydrogens in the first H group. And now we have this negatively charged O2H group. And again, almost every step in this reaction makes no sense in regards to our typical acid um, addition reaction. So this one. You just have to remember that there's a lot of weird steps and you need to keep those weird things memorized and know when they occur. So uh, the purpose of this O2H when it's negatively charged is to bond directly to boron and make this really long molecular structure. So the negatively charged O group bonds to boron. It's a big step. And, um, Boron is bonded to the long OOH chain. And this has two hydrogens coming up. So we have to have some boron everywhere. Um, in this case, right now, once we put electrons onto it, it actually becomes negatively charged. And right before. Before, no. There is no charge. Right? No charge on it. Okay, so are we good with that? The only reason we use this is right here. Because we just put more electrons onto it when it is stable. Because we have the uh, yeah, OH. OH. So that's weird step number one. This is when you go to weird step number two. So <laughs> OOH bonds to boron. And then boron does not want a negative charge, but the way it stabilizes it, instead of breaking anything off, it just rearranges the molecules. So this is the rearrangement he was talking about. What happens is the electrons on this oxygen <laughs> uh, let me reword that. So boron is negatively charged. It wants to lose electrons. It's going to do that by breaking this wedge bond. Once this wedge bond breaks, it's going to immediately bond to this oxygen here. Once this oxygen gets more electrons, it's going to break off this hydroxyl here. So what occurs when you do this is the oxygen is now like flipping the boron over so it goes OB in sequence. So all we're doing is removing the hydroxyl and then flipping the boron component. So the hydroxyl breaks off. Yep. And it becomes a base which we use later to deprotonate something. So it becomes OBHH. Yeah. Or O, this goes O, yeah, O-B-H-H. So this is the rearrangement portion. So we bond to boron, and then we rearrange, giving us O bonded to boron, which is bonded to hydrogen. So now boron is back to being stable. Yeah, and we have OH floating around, which is pretty helpful, I believe. So the negative component of the boron chain is the same as the OH right here? Yeah. All right. And we still have OH with a negative charge floating around. All right, so this is, again, 
we're kind of close to our final product. I mean, we had the oil we wanted to be the good piece of hydrogen, but we're not going to protonate it. We're going to give this oxygen a negative charge. So again, kind of strange um, compared to what we're used to. So what you have to remember is that this hydroxide is used to get rid of this boron. It's going to cleave it, just like kind of like we did on the osmium. So negatively charged hydroxide is going to bond to boron. And once this boron gets that extra, extra electron still, it's going to break off this bond here. So we form a bond, and then we break a bond. So all of these are, are kind of strange steps. So just, just practice them a lot and tell yourself why it's not what we're used to. What is the OH come from? The OH came from this rearrangement. I know that we're breaking the so what is the, you see, do you have the O, does that O the pair stay there or does that break off? The, the O stays there. And where does the H come from? So the H, good question. Um, is it right? Is it okay if I, if I get extend H? So if we continue this, we took out the boron. Now we have a negatively charged oxygen. And then the very last step is the very last reagent. The only time you use water in this reaction is to protonate this negatively charged oxygen. So we have water in our list of reagents, and this is the one time we use it. So this negatively charged, this nucleophilic oxygen is going to immediately take the hydrogen from water, giving us our final product. In anti-Markovnikov polar position, that is stiff to the hydrogen that bonded to the fly. Yeah, just that there's an OH in the boron complex. Yeah, and H is floating with its label, so it's like, it's like electrically charged. Honestly, for a lot of reactions in organic chemistry, they never tell you what happens with electrically charged. They kind of just see it as it takes pressure. It takes pressure to say that it's stronger, it pulls that H off and feeds it more than oxygen water does. Yep. I think, I personally think this is the hardest reaction on the exam. So, I practice the most. <laughs> I want to say yes. Um, because it's not impossible, but it's almost 80% memorization. <laughs> Any questions on the hydroboration reaction? Did you get there and show it? Did you get with uh, the third table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, show the final two lines. In that case, we can go in there. Did you just not show the H? Yeah. Oh, that makes total sense. I mean, they're so, they're so vague with the rules they want to see. They, sometimes they'll say that typically a product that just shows the addition piece, the OH, is fine. But if you show the H just in case. If you start showing hydrogens, you should show all of them. Show the hydrogen and we'll take off or as long as you show all of them. Like yeah. I oh, do it. you have to go around the entire uh, let me write a quick example. So let's say Yeah. Okay. So, so let's yeah. if you bond in an OH here. So in this case there isn't another hydrogen, but if we had a hydrogen here and you said there that hydrogen was there, then I would definitely show you another hydrogen. So, kind of goes by, if you're going to put stuff on a carbon, that's everything. All right. We normally don't show hydrogens, but yeah, typically we don't. 